this further proof that the Nations League is a competition which is proving the cynics wrong? Yeah, I was one of them. I didn't know who did what or who got where, but I think the level of the games, the competition of the games has been great. I used to dread International Week watching England play Gibraltar and wonder how many goals England would win, would win the game by. You see the, the group that England were, were in against Croatia and Spain. You see Ben Chilwell go away in Spain, a competitive, a competitive game, play so well, a young England team go and be challenged against the very best and come out on top. And for Scotland, it's absolutely fantastic because they've won their group, a competitive group, went all the way to the wide, they were holding on to the end. Now they've got a fantastic prize of a, of a playoff of making, making the Euros. And I think it's absolutely fantastic and I think it's been a breath of fresh air for international football. Hats off to Alex McLeish as well. They did it the hard yeah. way tonight, didn't they? It's, it's just a brilliant achievement. It's resurrected in international football. I mean, I'm a great believer of semantics. For years, we've called it a friendly. That in itself, I think, drove people away from, from going to games by putting it into a league, making it competitive. There's a prize at the end of it. Mm. All of a sudden, just ramps up the competition. And I've got to be honest, for the first time in a long time, I'm tuning in and watching international football in a way I haven't done before. Yeah. And you're just seeing the impact it's having, not just for, for emerging nations, but smaller nations like Scotland. I mean, to think they've guaranteed a playoff spot makes everything worthwhile. And that performance just reflected that tonight. Also as well, for coaches, far better than friendlies. Because you, Brilliant. you can't, you can't you know, practising substitutions in friendlies or taxes, no. is it has nowhere near the same intensity. It's not the same it? intensity, no matter how much you put on it. And yes, we all want to play for our country, represent our country, but you want to do it competing. Because that's what football's about, it's about competing. And I go back to the, the away game in Spain, which I thought was the best England performance I've seen probably for a decade. I thought just as a one-off performance, absolutely outstanding. And to go into a competitive game away at Spain and dominate in the first half the way they did with so many young players has now set up Gareth Southgate, Southgate in a way of where he's going. He's going young. He can, see, he can put players in that are young, maybe not experienced, and they can go and thrive and perform in, under pressure. It's here it's to stay. It's definitely... I mean, the, the, you're now all of a sudden starting to see teams, international teams, perform on a regular basis. That's the real measure, mm. because... The competitions, World Cup, European Championship, we're talking about six games. Mm. You know, you can have injuries to key players. Mm. What you're seeing is the formulation of competitive teams over a period of time. Mm. I mean, and what a great situation for England in this current moment. I mean, to be performing like they have against Croatia and Spain mm. is, is, is no fluke. It's been, you know, great progression under Gareth and... I think it's it's been a tournament, like I said, that's resurrected international football, and I hope they bring it into the women's game. Much how, needed. How do you feel about England being in a semi-final? Oh, absolutely brilliant, and I love the fact we played the three lions. I, I, I think nothing annoyed me more than being told it wasn't good to celebrate <laughs> using our national song. Uh, I think the reality is we haven't had an awful lot to celebrate, and Gareth Southgate and and his team has has brought a joy and a love back to international our international team, and mm. we watch it in a way I think that we haven't done for many many years, yeah. and I think there's a genuine belief that they can do something, not the, just that they care, yeah, that they that can actually do something. The atmosphere at Wembley against Croatia was outstanding. I've not seen a, a game at the, in this period of, of the season take on so much precedent with so many fans that right to the end they were, they were trying to get the win, trying to get promoted so they could go to the semi-final. Just put so much more on the game. I thought the atmosphere was incredible. It's just reignited international football and credit to UEFA. Credit to UEFA because it was, for me, the, friend, the way it was going with friendlies and playing against nations that don't have a chance. What do you, what do you gain out of that? No, but think so about it, that it way the players, so you say you're playing in a friendly, mm. switch off. Mm. You say it's a league, it's competitive, there's something at the end of it. Yeah. It just all of a sudden just changed the whole dynamic. It was like watching a mini Euros mm -hmm. every international break. And, yeah. and that's what you really want to see from that. And now players work harder, I think, to get called up for international teams rather than avoid those mm. games. How big do we think this tournament could become? I don't know. I don't think it's ever going to be a Euros or, no. a, or, or a World Cup. But I think as a substitute for just organising friendlies where you can make six subs after 50 minutes and the game just dies, I think it's, just a, I think it's here to stay. I think it's a much better way of using the, the international slots. I think it manages of club teams can't put that much pressure now on the managers in terms of you can't take my player because it's a competitive game whereas before in friendlies there was a lot a lot of arguments between club managers and, and international managers about team selection that's been taken out of the equation as well so I think it's been fantastic I mean alongside England there's Holland Portugal and Switzerland you look at you look at the clubs that are absent 
Germany, France, Belgium, Italy, Spain. <laughs> well, some would argue they turn it on when it comes around the big tournaments, mm. but the, the reality is now Nations League are creating a new, I think, a new crop of teams, and it makes... I think winning the top tournaments now are going to become even harder because if you believe in best practice on a more regular basis, which I do, it means that every time they meet up internationally, that will become a truer reflection of a team rather than what you do every two years. But in addition to that, you know, players are now formulating a way of playing under pressure, you know, with something at stake. And I think then we're going to start to see, like I said, more teams compete for the coveted prizes. Do you think also as well it's a continuation of the good work that Gareth Southgate did in the summer in the World Cup and possibly has taken away some of the, if you like, the cynicism surrounding England not really playing strong opposition yeah. until the semi-finals. If you, if you, if you, ask, if you discount yeah. the game against Belgium. No, of course. If you, if you take England now from England to World Cup, I think they're a better, better squad and a better side now. And I think that's all credit to Gareth because a lot of managers would have said, right, I play 3 5 2 at the World Cup. We did really well. We got to a semi final. What has Gareth done? He's adapted the way he's played. They're pressing high. They're playing 4 3 3. They're using Rashford and Sterling in wide positions. And now you're seeing Jaden Sancho. It's so exciting. But England are playing a system that suits him. Ross Barkley comes back into equation doing so well at Chelsea, playing exactly the same way. The way Gareth set his team up suits the players that he's got, the young players, because they play the same way as Manchester. Manchester City, they're playing the same way as Liverpool, Tottenham. There's where all the, those are where all these players are coming from, Chelsea as well. But they're all playing in that way of playing high, taking possession, playing from the back and counter-pressing and pressing the ball. And that's like all credit to Gareth for that. So to, to wrap this up, to summarise, would you say in many, many ways Gareth Southgate embodies or epitomises exactly what we've been talking about throughout the show? Yeah, one, best, best possible practice taking information from other sports and not being afraid to do things differently from the way they've always been done. Absolutely. Progressive, modern, thoughtful leader. He's a wonderful guy. I've had the pleasure of being in his company a few times. I think you can trust the work that he's doing and it's great to see that we support someone. And importantly, we support a British manager who's in... Is it probably coveted and will be coveted for top jobs outside of this country beyond England. I think it's, it's the right time for... He's got a great generation of players around him, and, but it's much credit to the work the FA have done with their DNA mm. and getting that right. They've been, I think, meth method methodological about it and persistent with that right approach. And in Gareth, certainly got a fantastic leader.